This is a remarkable place to me because you have on one side over here, modern science. This is the new world. And that is primitive the way it was thousands of years ago. This has not been touched. Well, indeed, it is old Florida, and it's old Florida preserved, which is unique. It's an exceptional place. It is just awesome to be able to come over the bridge at sunrise onto Merritt Island and into this refuge. And the greenery, the flora and fauna, the, the wildlife, it's just, it's spectacular. On a narrow stretch of Barrier Island along Florida's eastern shore is an oasis. Here at the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, marshes and scrubland are broken only by towering lawn structures, and birds share the skies with rockets. Two, one, and lift off the Atlas V. Bordered by the Atlantic Ocean to the east, and the Indian River Lagoon to the west. The refuge shares boundaries with NASA's Kennedy Space Center. To the north lies the unspoiled beauty of the Canaveral National Seashore. Within these borders, a variety of natural habitats provide sanctuary to more than 500 animal species, including 14 that are considered endangered or threatened. The stories of the wildlife refuge and the space program have been inseparably linked since the refuge was established in 1963 to manage the lands surrounding the launch complex. Today, these 140,000 acres at the northern end of Merritt Island provide a safe haven for hundreds of species of wildlife and offer visitors a trip back in time to old Florida. The combination of a great national wildlife refuge of the Space Center and the National Park. There's no other place in the United States or in the world that, that something as magical as this exists. Humans have been drawn to life along these shores for thousands of years. The island boasted plentiful fishing and hunting, the perfect climate for growing citrus, and a quiet life of relative isolation. By the late 1800s, small communities with names like Shiloh, Allenhurst, Wilson, and Orsino formed around these industries. From then until the early 1960s, generations of families made this wild paradise their home. U.S. Senator Bill Nelson is a fifth generation Floridian. In 1986, as an astronaut, he flew into space aboard Space Shuttle Columbia, launching just miles away from the place where his grandparents' home once stood. My grandparents, Charles Hart Nelson and Jane Ellen Nelson, homesteaded under the Homestead Act on 160 acres of land that today is at the north end of the space shuttle runway. For the children who visited or grew up on the island, it was a magical place filled with animals, woods, and waterways where they could play, learn, and have their own adventures. Decade after decade, generations of families enjoyed the serenity of their own piece of paradise on Florida's east coast. But things began to change as the nation's space program started to get off the ground. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, was formed in 1958. And in 1961, Project Mercury began with the launch of Alan Shepard, the first American in space. Shortly thereafter, the nation set its sights on the moon. The space agency needed land and it intended to buy it from property owners on North Merritt Island. In 1962, NASA purchased more than 80,000 acres of land previously owned by residents. It also negotiated with the state of Florida for nearly 56,000 more for a total of almost 140,000 acres. Families packed up their belongings and left the homes and land they'd loved. 
In August 1963, NASA and the Bureau of Sport, Fisheries and Wildlife worked out a deal establishing the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. At the time, Nathaniel Reed was the U.S. Undersecretary of the Department of the Interior. The administrator and I sat down and he passed me a map. I looked at the map and I put my hand across the table and I said, Administrator, from the standpoint of the Assistant Secretary, it's a deal. In addition to the wildlife refuge, in 1975, the stretch of Atlantic Beach to the north of Kennedy Space Center was designated the Canaveral National Seashore, making it a national park. Today, after decades of working side by side, officials with NASA, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and National Park Service still maintain that partnering spirit, proving each day that technology and a healthy environment can coexist in harmony. This is a 144,000 acre wildlife refuge and that's way more than we, the NASA Kennedy Space Center, can handle. Having the Fish and Wildlife Service take care of it for us, I mean, that is an outstanding partnership. Merritt Island and National Wildlife Refuge is such a fasc fascinating place because of the multiple ecological systems from flatwoods, pine woods, the home of really an extraordinary number of scrub jay families, highly endangered. Uh, then you go into hammocks and into saltwater territory. Uh, you have the lagoon, which is the home of, winter home of thousands of duck. The uplands, both uh, in the hammocks and on the, uh, on the and basically on the seashore uh, territories plus the pine woods, are the home of hundreds of thousands of migratory birds. One bird frequently spotted in the refuge is the majestic bald eagle. There are several active nests in and around Kennedy Space Center, but one in particular has been in use for decades. This large, well-known airy is nestled high in a pine tree off a busy roadway at the heart of the spaceport, where tour bus drivers point it out to visitors. Well, it's been there for 20, 30 years, and you know, very strong, withstood hurricanes. But the eagle, I mean, it's symbolic of what we do. It's symbolic of our nation, the perseverance, strength, beauty of a soaring eagle. You know, it, it's kind of the Kennedy Space Center. While delicate ecosystems across Florida have been lost to development, the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge has remained a natural oasis, not only for the flora and fauna that call it home, but for the visitors who flock here for birding, boating, photography, or just serenity. And for many of those who left long ago, this is a legacy they're proud to be a part of. We do like the fact that when we're got a group of people in our living room and they show the countdown clock, I'm the first one to point out the fact that our house was just on the other side of the countdown clock. For years to come, generation after generation will be able to experience old Florida in all of its majesty at the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge.